Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about how to set up one of these little beauties in a number of different ways, including how we do it here at MJ's Pythons and what you can do uh, as a new keeper at home. Let's get started. So guys, first off, we're going to start off with how we do it for our hatchlings when they first hatch. So when the animals actually um, hatch out, and once they've had their first shed, they'll be set up in these um, three litre Bra Plus boxes. Now, a few things to mention. First of all, is that there will be no water in any of these dishes because obviously we're moving things around, they're only for display. Um, and also you'll notice that we use Lignocell with the hatchlings. Now, the reason for that is, it is the only setup we use Lignocell with. We don't actually ever use Lignocell with anything else other than uh, with these tubs. And that's because we have used more humid substrate and it's just not worked very well. So this animal is obviously not freshly hatched and is actually on the, it would, it's now living in the larger enclosure, which I'll show you shortly. But this is the size of enclosure that will keep them in up until they're ready to move up. So generally speaking for the first, up to first 10 feeds, and after they've had their first 10 feeds, we usually look to move them up again. Now, something to note about these lids, they are not very secure. So we actually have these as part of a rack. And the reason for that is the rack ensures that the animal can't lift off these lids, okay? Because if you leave this here, believe me, they're clever enough and strong enough to very easily pop up the corners and escape. So this is not suitable to have sort of free sitting on the side. You do want this as either part of a rack or with tape or something to hold it on. But this is again for the first sort of seven to 10 feeds of life and then we'll move up from here. And once we do that, these animals will then move from this three liter Bra Plus box to a second rack that we have, which houses these V18s. Now, some people start them straight away in V18s. I prefer to start them in the smaller tubs and then progress as they get of age. And they'll live in here. And you can see this little one is actually living in a V18 now. Plenty of space, you'll see very simplistic uh, setups, but we do have to mention that you, when setting up a, a baby ball python, we really, really need to think about the nature and the psychology behind these animals. So the behavior of this animal is in the wild, it will live in, or you naturally find them in abandoned rat burrows or in termite mounds. And what they'll do is they'll find tight little holes in the wild and they'll actually sneak themselves in there and they like to feel um, sort of the entire body's touching the walls of wherever they're in. They'll just sit there. So in the wild, they'll, they'll sit and wait predators for the most part, unless prey is scarce, but they'll wait for something to come to them. So in captivity, we need to make sure that we are stimulating or simulating this rather. Now, adults vary, and obviously there are always exceptions to the rule. Not all ball pythons will be like that. Some hatchlings do very well in larger enclosures, but we're talking about the, for the most part, the most common thing is that they are typically quite shy and typically they will tend to go off food if exposed to very large spaces, very large open spaces and not feeling very insecure. Now you could obviously put a hide in here. There's nothing to stop you putting decor. Um, however, remember that the reason there are no hides here is because this is actually part of a rack, the entire box acts as a hide. Same thing with this one. So when these are inserted into a rack system, it becomes dark for the most part. Obviously you get natural light penetrating from the front in both cases. However, for the most part, it will be nice and dark and the animal feels more secure. There are cases where we move them up into the V18s, but if they don't do well, if they stop feeding for any reason for a prolonged period of time, we will then move them back down to the smaller tubs uh, until they start feeding regularly again. So this is how we do it. And obviously, they will eventually outgrow these tubs. Now, we will then upgrade them, and if I get this one out of the way, so we can demote this, um, we will upgrade them into these tubs. Now, these are also tubs which we use, um, or which we sell along with the hatchlings. Now, this is not a brand new tub, so please disregard that. We're using this for demonstration purposes only here. So this is a nine litre, really useful box. And first thing you'll notice, really good secure lids. So these handles act as locks and there is no way an animal can escape provided the locks are still in place. If we take a look inside, this is sort of the basic setup that we provide um, 
for a hatchling ball python. So you can see plenty of space, similar to this in terms of floor space. However, you've changed it from this long, narrow corridor of a, of, a, of a tub, if you will, to a more open floor pan. Now these hides work really well. They are nice and tall, which allows some of the larger snakes to actually get in there. And typically, and this is a very ballpark idea, typically these setups will be fine for the first 12 to 18 months of life. Now, that being said, again, there are always exceptions to the rule. Some ball pythons will be happy moving up sooner and they'll do well. Other ball pythons will be 18 months old and not do particularly well. It's also the case that different um, animals will have different growth rates. And there's some good examples, actually, where, considering we are here. Oh, sorry. This is a perfect example in this tub here. So this female right here is the same age. So this champagne entry female is about two years old now. She's obviously too large for this tub. And you can see that really, really clearly. There is no way this animal could live in that tub. However, to give you a size different a comparison, sorry, I'll shift this table out of the way, impulse. Compared to her, she is much smaller. However, these guys are the same age, right? They're actually the exact same age, just this girl is currently weighing in at about, I believe it's about 800 grams, whereas her counterpart, her clutch mate, it's not the same clutch, but same year, is 1,490 grams at last weight. Now they're being fed the same, they've been offered the same foods, they're just growing at a different rate. And it's important to remember that when you are uh, considering housing for a baby ball python. Oh, for a moment there, I thought she escaped. She's used her natural instincts to hide. There she is. Um, <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, I've lost the snake. So she didn't escape on me. She decided to, you know, find a dark, and you notice she seeked, she seeked out, sought out the dark, corner, well, the dark hide in order to escape. Obviously we have an LED bright light above, but this is a nice setup. You also notice from below that we have these five watt heat mats. Now, generally speaking, heat mats should always be used with a thermostat, always. There are no exceptions for the most part. There are two options we use here that help, um, in, in a sense, make a starter setup slightly cheaper. This is a great alternative. So these heat mats actually come with a dimmer switch. Now, we were skeptical when we first got them. We got them in, we've trialed them for about, uh, I think it's about seven weeks now. We've been trialing one of the tubs and we found that actually it's very, very good. The thing is, however, you cannot guess your temperatures, guys. You can never just go, oh yeah, it'll be fine or use your hand or even those uh, thermometers that you tend to stick on the side because they're not always accurate. They're telling you air temperature. What you do need to get yourselves is a nice little infrared heat uh, well, thermal gun, if you will. Now this has obviously not been on, but the way this works is you literally just point, shoot, and you would point the laser at the temperature that you want. And obviously now it's at 75, which would be way too cold. Remember these setups have just been sitting here. The heat mat isn't on, but you wanna use something like this so you know for sure what your temperatures are at. Now, by doing that, we adjust this um, and you can actually adjust. This allows you to adjust the power going to the heat mat, a bit like a thermostat will. And you tend to find a sweet spot where you have that temperature. For hatchlings, we tend to prefer between 90 and 92 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, uh, I'll put it down in, look down now, that's the, the centigrade, because like, Celsius, I can't remember. Um, but 90 to 92 Fahrenheit is what we tend to keep our hatchlings in terms of their hot spot, cool end, anywhere down to about 80, uh, between 80 and 84 for their cool side. So that's what you want to imitate, well, mimic with these setups. Now, obviously they're eventually going to grow out of this. So just really quickly, I will actually leave her in there and I will show you an example of an animal that we feel is ready to be moved. So it's one of our animals. I've pulled her out of her rack and she's not particularly pleased and she thinks I'm feeding her. But this is an animal who very, very shortly, uh, well, actually, tomorrow I believe it is, we're setting up a divided 33 litre tub for her. But if I put her back in here, and just so you know guys, this girl is 
very young. She is only, what is she now, seven months? Coming on mm -hmm. to eight months old. And she has been living in here. She does, however, love her food. She's been taking rats since she was a hatchling. And you can see now she's getting to that size where she's just way too big for this tub. Uh, we did try her previously. It didn't pay off. So we've given her some more time. We've get, got some more feeds in her. She's put on about, about another 100 grams. So we're going to try her again in the divided 33 litre rub. Now it's very, very important to know that you need to read what your animals are telling you. So if the animal is being moved into a larger enclosure and stops feeding, obviously give it time, give it a week or two to really settle in. You've moved it to its enclosure, it's not sure where it is, it's gonna need some time to adjust. But within two or three weeks, if you're seeing no interest in food, typically what that means is that the animal is struggling to you know, acclimatize to its new habitat. So what we do is we move them back down to their old tubs. And this girl, for example, literally when she moved down after two and a half weeks, the day after we put her back in, she ate again. So we're hoping now, you know, we've got high hopes that she'll do really well in the divided. But this is the kind of size, or slightly smaller, this is the kind of size you really want to start to consider upgrading. Now there is another option, instead of going straight to the divided 33 liters, which I have used, and you can set them up exactly in the same way. By the way, guys, We've used the same hides and the same water bowls in all of these, okay? And that's because I want it to be comparable. So if I move this girl just to the side, I will bring her out. So if you have a look, this is actually a 12 litre, really useful box or 12 litre rub. And if you look at them side by side, you can actually see that this is quite a bit larger than this nine litre. So for example, this girl, if we had another rack, she could do well in a 12 litre rub for the time being, for, for a duration, okay? And it would act as an intermediate, well, an intermediate, an intermediate size between the nine litre over here, right? So we're starting them off as hatchlings in here. It would act as an intermediary or intermediate, sorry, uh, size between this and one of these divided 33 liters, okay? So it does depend on the animal. These are really, really good. You could also start a hatchling in here. You may wanna add a bit more coverage, perhaps a little bit more foliage. I've, what I've seen some people do is, is um, add like second or third hides and a bit of foliage just to make it feel more secure. And they can do well in here. Again, it depends on the animal. So certain animals will do better than others. We've had great success with the nine liters for hatchlings um, from one, once they've had their sort of seventh feed and they're ready for us to sell on. People have had really good success in this size. I'm sure and certain that they would also do well in this size and this would last a little bit longer uh, until sort of this sort of size that you're seeing here with this beautiful girl and then you'd want to move them up. So that is how you would do it using a really useful box method or a rub method, okay? And there are, you know, there's so many ways of, about doing it. And we're trying to show you uh, ways in which a new person can get into the hobby, start with a hatchling ball python, because you will need a larger enclosure as an adult. But it's a way to get these animals established, uh, ensure that they're doing well, and then eventually put them into a temporary home. So another option for those, of, for those people who don't quite fancy the look of a really useful box, don't have a rack to put them in, or don't really just want to have one of these things sitting on their side, there is another option. It's slightly more expensive, but we wanted to show you, oh, let me put these down. We want to show you all the different ways you could do this. So, I'm gonna grab this from over here. And this is a Monkfield vivarium. So they are neat little vivariums. They're not too expensive, and they work fantastically well for a hatchling ball python. The first thing is, by the way, sorry, there is one lock missing here, but there's usually two latches as this one on either side, which are nice, ensure that the lid is nice and secure. The animal can't get out. It's actually open top. So it's visually more aesthetically pleasing for some people. You can actually open it from the top. So you have top access to the animals. And as you can see, it's a nice size. Now it's not so large. It's larger even than the um, 12 liter rub. However, it's quite shallow and sometimes the shallowness helps them feel a little bit more secure because there's not loads of open air, air space. In terms of setting these up, 
the little heat mats don't really work here. And if I just pop her in. So you want to be using something about that side. And this is um, just for, for display purposes. This is a six watt, six inch by 11 inch or 150 mil to, to uh, well, 150 millimeters by 28 millimeter, uh, six watt heat mat. You'd never want to use something like this without a thermostat. Regardless of what it is, this needs to be controlled by a thermostat. You can very easily overheat and actually kill your animals. These setups, actually, if we look at the back, they've actually installed a glass shelf. So the way this works is that the heat mat would slide into that glass slot and sit like this. And they've actually got this little um, cutout here for you to insert your thermostat. So if we take a look from the inside, okay. Unlock that. So you can see the probe there. It actually pushes through this sort of rubber um, stopper here, stops the animals getting out, but allows you to put the probe in. This is actually just a, and there are many thermostats out there. This is actually a microclimate, uh, one of the ones we use quite a lot with a lot of our enclosures. It's a microclimate 100 mini stat, really good. You would set your temperature and that would help you control the temperature in here. What I would recommend, and if you move the substrate out, you can actually see under there, you can see your therm your, your heat mat. So if I wiggle it around, oh, that's the, that's the probe. There you go, there's your heat mat. So your heat mat's right there. What I would recommend personally is to tape this down to the glass. Now what that allows you to do is it prevents so too much substrate being there and the probe sitting up in the air like this. Because obviously if the probe is up high, it's not reading the correct temperatures and it will, it will just not get the message that it's reached the temperature desired and turn off the heat mat. By taping it down to the base of the um, enclosure, you ensure that regardless of what the snake does, the thermostat is always in the correct position. So it'd be stuck down there. You'd have a thin layer of substrate over it. Oh, something like this. Obviously it's not taped down. And generally that's where you'd put your warm hide. So I would put my warm hide in there. And if it's got a, a nice a bit of area to move around in. It's got a water dish. Obviously we're using again, the same water dish and hide just for um, comparable sake. So you can compare the, the different setups that we're showing you. you I would re probably recommend a slightly larger water bowl here, just to ensure that the animal has somewhere where it can actually, uh, you, you kind of want to give them the opportunity to soak should they want to. It doesn't have to be like this though. This is a very, very simplistic way of doing things. Now, to make it a little bit more uh, naturalistic, if you will, what you could do is switch out one of these hides for one of the Exoterra hides, okay? And we could pop one of those with the little one let me get, grab the little one. You could pop one of those in there, a nice little stone decor. You could also very inexpensively grab one of these uh, plastic plants. So there's so many manufacturers, they're just artificial plants and you could insert them in, oh, hold on. You could insert them like this. Now, what I'd usually do, to be honest, and I don't want to do it because this is actually a, a, a plant that's actually currently in use. But what I would normally do is get a pair of scissors and cut off these branches and then you can actually tuck them in and make them look a little bit nicer, but we'll get away with it doing like this. So there's a nice little bit of shrubbery. You could add a log in here. You could add a second cool hide on the other side by the water bowl. And you see very easily and very simplistically, you can create a nice little um, habitat for your ball python, relatively inexpensively, looks good, serves the same function, by the way, as one of these tubs. So they serve the same purpose and what we, we must remember is that sometimes what looks naturalistic or aesthetically pleasing to us does not necessarily mean it's better for the animals. So that's where the psychology of humans and, 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 and well, bull pythons in this case differ. What we think, oh, that looks like a nice enclosure, may look like a nice enclosure to us. However, how is the animal perceiving that enclosure? And that's what we need to really take into account when we're looking at these things. But hope uh, these different setups help Hope it gave you some ideas. There are other options out there, guys. We just wanted to give you a range of different options, show you how we do it, show you some of the more simplistic ways uh, that you can use really useful boxes, show you a perhaps slightly more uh, aesthetically pleasing for the home if you've only got a single ball python. They do make these in larger sizes, so you can upgrade as the animal grows. That over there with uh, our little, uh, what's he? A red-footed red tortoise, foot. okay? 
That is actually one of these monk fills. It's a larger version. However, we just removed the lid. So you can upgrade them in that sort of size. And if I put this to finish off, if I just put this here beside that one, you can see there is quite a bit of a size difference. That's one option. One last thing I will say about these setups, however, is if the animal isn't doing particularly well, one thing you may want to consider is actually draping something over that top panel so that it creates a little bit more darkness for the animal. There's less light, less exposure. So you could lay something over this, whether you can cut out a bit of uh, wood to sit in there, even just a towel, uh, a little bit of vinyl, something just to cover up this top panel of glass to create a little bit more darkness and make the animal feel more secure. So I really, really hope that helped. I hope all these little bits we showed you gave you a bit of an insight of how we do it, gave you a bit of insight of why we do certain things that we do. Don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Tell us what you thought about my rambling for the last, how long has it been? 20 minutes. For the last 20 minutes. Um, tell me what you thought. Any questions, ask below. If you think of, you know, maybe we're not right in some, some way, comment down below. More than happy to discuss. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, guys. Your support means the world to us. And until the next video, we'll see you then. Bye.